time. So yeah, there it we goes. Master this game, which has been uh, let's see, 1993 when we first made this game, and uh, we had so much fun remastering Grim Fandango that we wanted to do this game. And it's totally different because this game is painted, and so we required everything to be repainted. Um, uh, but we were able to find all the source materials. And that was our argument that we made, like why we should be able to, we should remaster this and no one else, because I know we're all, the bodies are buried, so to speak. Yeah, right. <laughs> and we, our team was able to find the original digital recordings of the voice actors, which had been compressed for the floppy disks and, and uh, even the CD-ROM, they were compressed. Yeah. They all had this, like a hissing sound on them. They were compressed and we found the originals and we re-edited them all. So it's all original voices, sounds beautiful. And um, obviously things have been repainted. Some art had to be added to fill out the nice high-res screen. But so if nice. you want, you can still see the original art. If you, if you click the button, you can actually see what it looked like in 1993. I love that. Oh. And one, one of the things I love is, is when you were talking about repainting it, there's, there's stuff that's added around the sides to kind of make it fit in the 16 by 9. Like, you guys didn't just try to kind of like weirdly crop things. Yeah. You know, it's all kind of like there's this new art that fills out around the edges that I absolutely love. Yeah, we, we wanted to preserve the old, um, like, framing and storyboarding in a way, but just where needed, we painted, painted in extras. And we also wanted to add options for controls that were, in case people wanted uh, the old interface, they can play with that, but they can also play with the new interface, which is a little more like um, something you might have seen in Grim Remastered or in Broken Age, where there's there's inventory, but there's also a um, a, a verb. I'd um, see, some people call it a verb coin. I called it a verb skull because we had it in, uh, in uh, Full Throttle. Oh yeah, yeah, skull yeah, that yeah, would skull, yeah. And this is a verb dial, if you will. Gotcha. But you can also play the old art with the new interface, or the new interface and the old art, and they're all new art with the old interface. You can mix and match it so the player has all the choice of how they want to play it. I absolutely love that. It is so funny when you talk about like kind of getting all of the old assets together and stuff. I think everybody believes that there's there's like some closet or some hard drive or something where everything is just kept in pristine condition. You Ideally, know? you would have done that. But yeah. you never think, when you finish a game, you mostly just want to, oh, I want to go to sleep and never think <laughs> about it. No one ever archives stuff. So you have to kind of sometimes call up individuals that worked there long ago. And it's like, did you ever like go home with any materials on accident? You know, and sometimes we found stuff that way. Lucas actually has a really nice archive because at the ranch, you know, Skywalker Ranch has the, yeah. all the Star Wars stuff in this like at, you know, atmospheric doomsday vault, the, you know, perfect temperature and everything. If you sneeze in there, it fills with poison gas and you're never allowed to leave. <laughs> yeah, we got to go out there and, and, and find all this. So the game's going to have a concept art browser with all the old concept art that we found in the, in the flat files up there. That's amazing. That's got to be kind of, kind of awesome for you. You know, people are coming to your games now through things like Broken Age or, or through some of your newer stuff. It, it's got to be kind of interesting to put this stuff out there for people who are coming to your sort of back catalog fresh. Mm -hmm. That is fun. I don't know which is better because, like, the, the old fans, uh, the, you're reminding them of something they liked when they were younger. Because that's really fun because, you know how, like, when you hear a sound from a video game you loved when you were 12, it makes you happy in a way that yeah. it's hard to make you happy in that exact same way anymore because, like, it got into your, like, inner brain or anyway. Yeah, absolutely. That, it's fun to kind of uh, to go in there and remind people. We try to be really, to kind of honor that their memory and make, make sure it's really pure to that. Um, and then it's really fun to just uh, expose these games to people who are like, what? I've never heard. What is pointing and clicking? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Um, and uh, and ideally, like it's even greater when someone's playing with their kid or something. Like they played it when they were a kid, and now they're playing it with their kid, and they remember playing it with their parents. You know, like I played adventure games with my dad, and yeah, um, they're they're great games you can play like together. Yeah, I mean, it was fun going back, like when when uh, Grim Fandango came out, going back with my with my wife who had kind of gotten into games later on in life, and like playing back through it and remembering some of the puzzles and trying to. It's like, oh, I think I know what we have to do here in I the mean, garage. I mean, exactly like, the same experience for me. Yeah. Even the puzzles I designed, I'm like, oh, I think, uh, how do I? Oh, and like, it's really embarrassing when you have to look up your own design on the internet. Do you ever go back and just look at it and be like, oh, that was. That was a pretty good one. Like, is there anything in Day of the Tentacle where you're like, I did pretty good with that one? <laughs> well, you know, the Dave Grossman and I were the designers and the team. I, I remember certain puzzles that make me think about, like the whole sequence with a hamster, and the time travel. Yes. And the sweater, and the, I don't want to give it away, but it just um, reminded me how, how much fun it was to think of those puzzles because they were so ridiculous, you know, at the time. Like and uh, I mean, there's a lot of puzzles you play, and um, I remember playing, I was playing Monkey 2, 
And there's some things like the monkey wrench in that. And I was like, well, how did we ever think someone would ever figure that out? I really can't right. remember why we thought. There must have been a hint in I was playing it. I was like, I don't find any hints. We think we just, hmm, I don't know. But I feel like, I feel like Day of the Tentacle, there's, there's, there's one with, it involves knowledge of certain superstitions about washing your car and yes. the rain. We talked about this one the last time we were hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it made sense. It made sense to us. There are a couple hints about it. But adventure games always, every adventure game, I think, has a couple puzzles that everybody knows because most people stopped on them. They're like, I don't, I don't know how to, you know. Well, they were also so singularly, because, because teams were so much smaller back then, it was, they were also so singularly tied to people's kind of sense of humors and stuff like that. So when you're talking about that, that superstition puzzle, it's very much like a particular type of joke, <laughs> you know? And it's sort of like, oh, I get that joke. Like, that's, that's a very, like, Tim joke, or that's a, very, that's a joke that was very popular at the time, or like, and then going back and looking at it, you're like, oh, I'll explain this joke to this person. Like all the jokes that ended with some character saying not, yeah. that you're like, I think that's a 93 thing. People, uh, people don't remember, but every joke at the end in Day of the Tentacle ended with not, not or as if, and they had to pull that out for the director. I cut. swear it was funny at the time. It no. seemed really good at yeah, the time. Yeah, the remaster, we cut out all the 90s jokes. <laughs> <laughs> all the spit there. takes. Yeah. All the, it was smaller back then. Like, the whole industry was smaller, and there was no internet. And so it was, almost, it was really just like a, a small group of people trying to make jokes and have fun and entertain each other while we made the game. Like, if it made each other laugh, like, that was all we had to go on because we couldn't like test them with big yeah. groups of people. It was it was fun playing them back then too in a, in a kind of pre-internet time because it was everything all these puzzles and all the solutions were always handed around playgrounds and things like that as like lore, you know what I mean? Like, oh no, I've solved the hamster puzzle. Mm -hmm. I know how it works. And everybody's mm -hmm. like, oh, you solved the hamster puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so this is great. I mean, it, it, when when are we going to be uh, able to get our hands on Day of the Tentacle remastered? March and coming in March. And uh, I believe, yeah, I think I have that right. It's in the trailer. <laughs> it's in the end of the trailer. That'll definitely confirm okay, it. Okay, great. So, um, so watch the trailer and then you will know. <laughs> hey, no, it's March. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and this has really been really fun, and that's what inspired us to go forward and announce Full Throttle. You saw that one, right? Yes. Full Throttle I'm Remastered. So excited about that. It's really exciting. So excited. It's so funny. Like, just a few weeks before you were announcing it, uh, uh, a bunch of friends and I had just got into this huge conversation about it uh, on Twitter. And I just started noticing, like, just some friends I have at Double Fine, like, faving those tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. Man, if you track the favorites of people on various teams, yeah. you probably predict a lot of announcements in this industry. Hmm. Don't, don't try to do that. Don't try to do it. You'll, ruin, you'll ruin all the fun for yourself. Double Fine people don't favor anything. Don't favor any tweets anymore. Yeah. Do not get on the internet. It's now I favorite all of double People fine. talk about like <laughs> sequels to every game, like, and I favored it, and I always wonder if I hope I just didn't just confirm Half Life Three just then. But yeah, I think everything confirms Half Life Three. Sure, every time. it's, it's in all of our power right now, we to just confirm, confirm Half Life Three yeah, yeah, yeah. through everything. Uh, so, Full Throttle. Obviously, you just announced it. I don't know how far you are into the process of, of, of remastering or whatever. But uh, oh, no, tell us a little. No, well, this this is the team. Our remaster team has to finish this okay and then they'll get to work on that we started preliminary work like finding the source material finding we found all the concept art for for throttle too okay um but uh yeah probably they'll get started on it after they finish this oh he's gonna do the puzzle with the dirty carriage oh he, oh. Exited, he exited just before to make sure